Hello, I hope you're well. Now I was wondering, do you ever open up an Arduino sketch and you look at everything in there uh, and you're just like, wow, I ha I really don't know exactly what's going on. Well, you know, that happens to me all the time. You know, it takes practice to start kind of snooping around and, and I think what is a good thing to do is to get comfortable with opening up a sketch, acknowledging the fact that you, you might not necessarily understand everything, but still to kind of be able to look through it and find the things that you can understand. So in today's video, what we're going to do is use the ADX345 triple axis accelerometer is kind of that example to go in the sketch, acknowledge that, you know, I'm not sure I understand everything that's going on here, but I'm going to try to find what I do know. And then what I want to do is I want to use the output from the three axes of the accelerometer and I want it to use it I want to use that to change the color of an RGB LED so one axis will control the red color, the, the amount of red another the amount of green and another the amount of blue so pretty simple output um, you know uh, the accelerometer can do a lot more than, than that obviously but for our purposes I just want to go in and see see if I can accomplish that so let's go ahead and take a look at this so I already mentioned that you know there's a lot of stuff I don't know and and here's a perfect example of a, a big mistake I made when I was ordering a part. This is on the SparkFun website, and I shop at SparkFun uh, frequently. They've got a lot of great stuff, a lot of really good tutorials, and they're also dedicated to open sourcing a lot of their hardware designs, which is fantastic. Um, and so here I was looking at the triple axis accelerometer. It's the ADXL345. And I thought, yeah, great, this is what I want. Well, what I really wanted was to get this, which is the breakout board for it. So you can see the breakout board just takes that discrete component, and then it puts it on PCB and hooks it up to these leads here so you can actually plug it into a breadboard and prototype with it more easily. So, well, I didn't do that. I bought this and, um, you know, at the time I was like, oh man, I mean, that's really tiny. It would be hard just to solder little things on. So, uh, what I ended up doing was making my own breakout board uh, using Upverter and Upverter is like an online uh, schematic PCB design tool. So I made this uh, PCB board and uh, again, again, my ignorance, I, I screwed up the design. I, I didn't have the ground plane fill correctly anyway, so I had to run this jumper wire. But in the end, it still worked. I was super pleased. I ended up, basically, I have this. I just have my own version of it that I made. It would probably be a lot easier just to buy this, especially since the price difference is like seven bucks, I think. Yeah, 10 bucks, way less work just to get that in any case. So this comes with a lot of good documentation. So if we go to the tutorial page on SparkFund for the ADXL345, they have a quick start guide and uh, it's actually really nice. They provide you some basic Arduino code and some more advanced Arduino code and processing code. What we're going to look at is that basic Arduino code. So this is the code that I've I've got up in the Arduino IDE right now. I'll uh, make sure that this link is available on the website. Now not only do they have the code but they also show you how to hook it up very straightforward to hook it up and I won't go into this again because it's it's right on the SparkFun website no no need to repeat that and then they have a really nice tutorial about it just kinda of talks about the code and walks through it so that's basically uh, you know I'm just gonna kinda of go in there and snoop and poop around so let's go ahead and do that so here we are in the Arduino IDE and what I have open is the example sketch provided for the ADXL345 basic from the SparkFun website. So again, what I'm going to do is kind of go through here. I'm going to acknowledge that okay, I'm not maybe I don't really understand everything, um, but what I'm going to look for is stuff that I do understand. And again, my goal here is I want to take the output from the accelerometer and I want to map that output to some of the digital pins so I can do an analog write with them and then use that output to control the colors on an RGB LED. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and upload this to my board. And then what I'm going to do is look at the serial monitor. Okay, and you can see here's all these numbers being spit out here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of adjust my breadboard. And you can see as I adjust the position of the breadboard, these numbers change. And uh, let me just turn off auto scroll. So you can see here are the different axes. And I think it's the, that's the X, that's the Y, and that's the Z and you can see they've they changed and I can notice you know I've got negative numbers positive numbers but the numbers all look within a range of negative 100 to 
Let's see, about a positive 120-ish, something like that. Okay, so I kind of note that. And I mean, the data is pretty straightforward. So let's go back into the sketch and start identifying what we do know. Now, lucky for us, they did a great job commenting the code, so it should be easy enough to at least kind of understand what's going on reading the comments. So that first line there, that uh, include spi.h, I know that they're including a library. It's a communications protocol uh, between things. And I be perfectly honest, I'm not too familiar with SPI, but that's fine. I can see that they've uh, they've included it here. So the next thing they're doing is declaring and initializing a variable called CS that is chip select. They say that up here, and they've set it equal to 10. Okay, straightforward enough. And then I've got uh, all these characters that are being specified. And to be honest, you know, I really don't know what it's all doing. It says we can read the data sheet to, data sheet to find out. But uh, you know, I didn't go there, so I don't. I don't particularly know, and right now I don't particularly care. Keep coming down here. I can see they've got. So okay, I know what a, I know what this is. This looks like a character array uh, or a string array rather. So it's a character, and they've got a string of ten values, uh, and it says these are gonna. This buffer is gonna hold the values that they read. So okay, that kind of makes sense. Not sure exactly how that will work. And then I can see they've got x, y, z declared as integers and these variables are actually going to hold the data. So I want to think, okay, x, y, z, that's pretty straightforward. I know those are probably the variables, variables I'm going to be looking for to try to pull that information off of. So now down in the setup, they have got some more commands that looks like they're specific to the SPI library because they start with SPI period. So I know any function that comes after that period is going to be a function of that SPI library. So Again, I'm not too familiar with the SPI library, but here's a begin function, a set data mode. I am familiar with serial begin. Okay, so that seems okay. And then they're setting the pin mode for the CS, that chip select as an output, and then they're writing that pin high. And then down here, they've got what looks to be a user-defined function, uh, write register, and also they use it two times down here and they're they're right looks like they're writing to some registers and you know I just really have no idea what those are doing but I'm not too again I'm not too worried about it according to the comments it says that it's just kind of setting up the accelerometer for a certain mode so you know I'll just accept that at face value so here we are in the loop now they're using a read register function and again this is a user defined function uh, which is probably defined at the bottom of this sketch we'll look there shortly here this is kind of what I was looking for they've got x is equal to this long line of stuff, y is equal to this line of stuff, and z is equal to this line of stuff. Now, I'm you know I'm familiar with enough with some of these operators to see that they're doing bitwise math, but I'm not all that familiar with bit bitwise math. I'm sure this is easy enough to understand and read. I'm just not you know I'm just not there. But I don't particularly care because what I care about is I see that values are being assigned to the x, y, and z, and then I see that they're actually printing off that x, y, z. And I know they were printing. You know I did the control. Uh, I did the serial monitor and I saw those values go down. So for my purposes, you know, I kind of keep this highlighted in my head like, okay, this is kind of what I was looking for to do to achieve what I wanted to achieve. Then I look down here a little bit and okay, so there's the end of the loop. There's the end of the loop right here. So they they read a register, they assign these values, they do some bit bitwise math, assign these values to the x, y, and z. So I guess that's gonna be the raw data and that would be the data we just saw on the serial monitor and then they print those values to the serial monitor and they delay 10 milliseconds and then that's the end of loop um, and then down here they have defined these user defined functions that was the write register we saw in setup and then this is the read register that they just used in the loop right there okay and I'm not too worried about those functions because I think I found what I need so again what I want to do is take these XYZ values and write them to one of the digital pins using pulse width modulation so I know if I want to do a digital write, I have to have a value between 0 and 255 uh, for the analog write function. But I noticed when I was messing around with the accelerometer, you know, when we were looking at the serial port, you know, it's given me negative numbers, and then it's only going up, seemed like it was only going up to about 100. I don't, I don't particularly want negative numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map these x, y, z variables from the previous range to a range of 0 and 255. So let's go ahead and do that. So here all I've done is I've assigned a new value for map. So I'm now I'm letting x equal to x. I'm taking that kind of, I'm just taking a guess here, a shot in the dark. The previous range was, it looked to me about a negative 150 to 150. And I'm 
mapping it to a new range to 0 and 255. And I just do that down the axis here, XYZ. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and upload this. And then I'm going to do a serial monitor. I can see the values look like they're within a range that is going to be usable. And let me kind of just shift around the board here and I can see, yep, okay, these ranges are good. Let me just turn off the auto scroll. Okay, so it looks like all these are going to be within range of the analog write function. So there's step one. Now that I have data that could be acceptable by analog write, you know, within that range from 0 to 255, I want to take it and I want to actually feed it to analog write and then I want to write to some of my digital pins where I have my RGB LED hooked up. So if we take a look at my breadboard, you can see I've got, I'm using a common cathode RGB LED and I have digital pins 3, 5, and 6 hooked up to the red, green, and blue anodes of this uh, RGB LED. All I'm going to do is use the analog write function now so that I can send the values over. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and open up the serial monitor. So we can see the numbers coming in over the serial monitor and now if we look at the board and I adjust the angle of the potentiometer we can see the color on the RGB LED is changing. So that was pretty easy. That was kind of a kind of fun little thing to do. So you can see do I know everything about this sketch? No, I sure don't. And you know, you may not know everything about every sketch you open. But the, kind of the point here was, you go into a sketch, you identify those things that you do know, that you do understand. You read the comments that the programmer has provided for you, just to kind of try to get a feel of what, well, what is taking place? What can I, what can I understand? And then from there, you kind of mess around a little bit and see what you can create. Now, you know, you might totally screw up the program. That's okay. And sometimes you might even, you know, blow up some hardware. Luckily, in this case, neither of, uh, of those things happened. But, you know, don't feel like just because you open up a sketch, it means gibberish to you that there isn't something in there that, that you can understand and, and mess with. So, hey, that was it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great day. Bye. Yeah, I know, the face gets hot in there. Okay, so it looks like it's reflowing to me, but I don't know for sure. Uh, temperature says it's only 404, and according to this, it's supposed to be at uh, I wanna 219. Take a picture. Hey, hold on. Hey, I want hey. to take a picture. That looks like it's reflowing to me, though. Oh, kid! Well, I don't know, you know, this is like, what do you do? Do you go with the field result, where it looks like it's, oops, where it looks like it is working, I guess. So now my major concern is, L, stop punching me. All right. Okay, that looks like it is reflowing to me. Color. Okay, so right now is where it says, so right now I need to check the clock, and I'm going to say for 30.